Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name's Stephanie and today I'm gonna to be showing you quite possibly the cutest nail polish brand that I've come across called Nail Polys. So maybe you actually have seen them before on Instagram. I've shared them a couple of times in my stories before where as you can probably see, the standout feature of them is their custom caps, which are actually hand sculpted and they are just the cutest thing. They're a relatively new brand where I think they only popped up this past spring, but I'm gonna be reviewing a couple of the collections, including the Pumpkin Party collection, the Adorable collection, and four of their mini polishes. So as you can probably tell, I'm excited to share these with you, but I will save my thoughts at the end after some comparisons. For now, let's get into the swatches. So starting with the Pumpkin Party collection, this first one is called I Only Have Pies For You. And it's obviously inspired by Pumpkin Pie, which is the little sculpture for the cap. So I wanted to just do a little 180 showing you all of the angles and all of the little details. And I also wanted to show you how this ended up working grip wise because these caps are not removable in the sense that they don't come off and there's another cylinder underneath. I'm not exactly sure how they are attached but it's definitely very secure so it all feels like one piece but yeah this ended up being really comfortable to hold. So back to the polish, this is described as a buttery crelly that's filled with pumpkiny copper hollow glitters and I just really love this color combination. I think it is just so yummy and just so perfect for fall. As far as the brush goes, as you can see, it is kind of that fan slash paddle brush, which I think is so nice. It helps with application and I ended up getting really nice coverage on the first coat. Very minimal bald spots, but considering how light it is, I kind of was expecting it to be a little bit more streaky or just thinner, but this ended up being pretty opaque for me on two coats or at least opaque enough for me <laughs> if you do thinner coats you might need a third but yeah as you probably know i'm a big fan of crullies so i love this one i just thought it was so cute and cozy for the season i thought it was really flattering with the creamy base color and those copper glitters the next polish we have is Love You A Latte, and this is a pumpkin spice cream that's anything but basic. Now look, as a fall and October baby, I am obligated to love pumpkins and therefore pumpkin spice, and I do, and I absolutely embrace that they are basic. <laughs> But yeah, this one is so adorable. I love the little pumpkin latte on the cap. It is just so freaking cute. So as far as the polish goes, this is described as a warm, toasty, brick orange cream. And I, no surprise, really, really love this one. The formula was almost like a slightly thicker crelly. Like you can see some nail line, but it does have a really great and even coverage. So I only ended up needing two for full opacity on this shade. And I thought it was just so pretty. This is really satisfying that terracotta color craving that I've been having this season. I absolutely adore how warm this is. It's just such a flattering shade. The next polish in the collection is called Give Em Pumpkin to Talk About, and this is a really sparkly, coppery shimmer that's filled with silver holographic flakies, and the cap for this one is obviously a pumpkin that's carved out at the top to reveal some sweet little candies, like candy corn, and I'm assuming like Twizzlers or something like that. So, so cute. So I love the detail in this one. Even though I'm not a fan of candy corn, it definitely is a very iconic Halloween candy staple, you know? <laughs> But yeah, the polish is so sparkly and pretty. I really love the formula on this one. I found it to be a little bit thinner than the cream formula, but again, it provided really even coverage on the first coat. You definitely still get some nail line though, so you are going to need at least a second coat for full coverage. I think personally, I would just wear this in two coats, even though you definitely can see a hint of nail line in extreme angles. I just don't think it warrants a third coat, but yeah. I really loved the base color of this one. I think it's just so flattering again for the season. I just don't know if I love the hollow flakies because in some lighting, I feel like it just looks a little bumpy. 
And rounding out the pumpkin party collection is You Are Bootiful. And this is inspired by a ghost shortbread cookie, which is just the cutest thing. <laughs> If you saw my Halloween nail art tutorials, you know that I love painting little ghosties and especially making them kind of cute. So I am such a sucker for this little cookie one. It is just so precious. But as far as the polish goes, this one is more on the spooky side where it's this really deep charcoal gray crelly base filled with buttery gold flakies. And actually on the website, it's described as buttery gold crumbs, which I just love so much the commitment to blending the food with the polish. It's just so satisfying. But yeah, the formula on this one was really nice, kind of like your typical Crelly, where it was a little sheer on the first coat, but built up perfectly in two. Now moving on to the Adorable collection, the first polish we have is We Ramen To Be, and this is obviously a ramen-inspired Crelly. So the cap on this one is a little bowl of ramen, which just looks so adorable. I want to eat it. Ryan and I are big fans of ramen, so we are so excited that the weather is cooling down so we can go grab a nice a hot bowl. So you'll have to let me know if you guys are ramen fans. But yeah, the polish itself is described as having a warm and savory rusty red crelly base with golden metallic flakes. The formula on this one was really nice, kind of like on the thicker side of a Crelly, similar to I Only Have Pies For You, where it provided really great coverage on the first coat, but it still was a tiny bit sheer, so I would recommend doing a second to make it fully opaque. And going back to the color really quick, I know it was described as a rusty red, but this one to me definitely leans very brown, but I'm not mad at that at all because it just works perfectly for the ramen broth inspiration, so it's really cozy. The next polish is called You Drive Me Loco Moco, and this is inspired by the Hawaiian Island classic Loco Moco, which is a bowl of white rice with a hamburger and then a fried egg on top, as well as some brown gravy. <laughs> I can't say that I've ever tried this before, but it at least looks super cute being interpreted as this nail polish cap. So this one was another Crelly formula that has a creamy white base color that's filled with gold metallic flakies. And again, this one had really great coverage on the first coat, which I was pretty impressed by considering it's a white Crelly. Usually I find them to be very thin and a little patchy, but this ended up looking nice for me on two coats. Or again, I just thought it was opaque enough for me where I didn't find it necessary to do a third coat for this one. But I think that just comes down to personal preference. So yeah, this one was definitely on the more dainty side with the gold flakies and the white base. It kind of blended in, but it's a nice subtle effect. The next Crelly in the collection is called Yogurt To Be Kidding Me, and this is obviously inspired by blueberry yogurt. You can see the little blueberries in the cap as well as some granola flakies. I think it is just so, so cute. So the polish itself is described as having a light periwinkle blue Crelly base filled with white flakes and copper hollow that is supposed to represent the granola, which I think, again, is so stinking cute. So this one again had really great coverage on the first coat. I had a little bit of light spots here and there, but very even coverage, very easy to work with. I do really love this paddle brush that's in the nail polys because it's just like that perfect shape to get around my cuticle, even though I'm obviously not doing the best job of that. <laughs> I still really like the shape and size of this brush so much. So this builds up really nicely in two coats. It has a very dainty periwinkle color. I kind of wish it was a little bit stronger. And the last polish in this collection is called Cerealously Lucky, which is obviously inspired by a bowl of cereal, more specifically inspired by Lucky Charms, and I definitely think that's one of the cuter cereals to sculpt. I mean, look at the detail in this one with the little marshmallows. It is just so yummy. So back to the polish, this is described as having a muted mint green crelly base filled with red and violet flakies which I'm assuming the mint green is supposed to represent the color that the milk turns to when you eat a bowl of Lucky Charms. 
<laughs> not that i've had it in a while but i do remember that unfortunately i feel like i didn't really see the mint green in this it definitely leaned very very light almost like a white polish to me so i wish there was a little bit more of that green color coming through but the flakies in this are really pretty they're super dainty almost giving it like a speckled effect and this one had another gorgeous two coat formula and lastly for the mini polys i have four of them and this first one is called wake me up before you coco and it is this really warm chocolatey brown that's obviously inspired by hot cocoa as you can see by the adorable handle and even though mini polishes tend to be a little bit tricky to work with because the handles are so short i found that this one was still pretty easy to grip because the cap itself was a little bit wider and not to mention this one has a paddle brush even as a mini so it definitely made application a lot easier we love to see it formula wise though this one was on the crelly side and i found it to be a little bit more sheer than the other creams that i've tried so far so on two coats i feel like there were some light spots i guess it depends on preference if people want to wear it in two coats but i kind of was expecting this shade to be fully opaque so this one did need a third coat for me but i actually really loved the color of this one it is like a chocolatey brown but it has so much warmth to it that i think is so pretty the next mini poly we have is called do the hokey pokey and this is just an emerald green cream with a little pokey bowl for the cap it is so cute i especially love anything sushi related and pokey bowls are so yummy so the formula on this shade was really nice and creamy, very full coverage on the first coat. Again, not quite enough to be a one coater, but a solid two coater for almost everybody. I would say maybe if your nails were longer than mine, you might need a third, but this definitely builds up really beautifully. So even though it's described as an emerald green, I feel like it's a little bit lighter and almost more teal leaning. Like there's definitely a blue undertone, but overall I feel like it's just a lot lighter than I normally would consider emerald. Either way, I think it's still an absolutely gorgeous color that works perfectly for the summer or the winter next we have so very sweet of you and this is a really gorgeous hot pink cream inspired by an acai bowl it has the cutest cap with these cut strawberries and bananas and granola in that smoothie base it is just so yummy so obviously i was gonna love this because it's the pink polish but i ended up also really loving this one because i found that it had the creamiest formula of all the creams where the others kind of had a little bit of a crelly kind of finish where it was a little bit squishy and you saw some nail line this one wasn't exactly a one coater but it just had the creamiest coverage if that makes sense so this one was opaque for me in two coats and to no one's surprise i love this color so much and the last mini poly I have is called Squeeze the Day, and it is this really pretty minty cream that has a super cute lemonade cap. I love the details on this one with the little lemon wedge and those little ice cubes. It is just so cute. So formula wise, this one had another really nice one where I was pretty surprised at how evenly it applied for being such a light shade. Like I just barely had that one bald spot near my tip, but this was another one that was fully opaque for me in two coats. Again, you might need a third because this is a lighter shade. And especially if you are just prone to doing thinner coats, you might see some more nail line, but I just didn't find it necessary to do a third coat for this one. So I really love the color of this one. It's just so light and refreshing. It's just your classic mint blue. And here is the Pumpkin Party Collection lineup. I just think this is so adorable, so perfect for the season and really cohesive too. I would say it's probably my favorite collection of the ones that I shared. And then for the adorable collection, I'm a fan of Crellies, so I thought these were cute. I just wish the two on the right were a little bit more pigmented so you can tell the difference in their base colors a bit more, but still really pretty overall. And as far as the mini polys go, I thought they were great all around with solid two coat formulas, but I was a little surprised that the darkest shade, the brown, took three coats. Still not too upset because I loved the color of that one. 
So moving on to comparisons, I wanted to do a quick side-by-side -side with I Only Have Pies For You next to Noodles Nail Polish's Pumpkin Spice, which is one of my favorite fall crellies. These were the closest that I had in terms of a creamy crelly with some pumpkin spice inspired glitters in here, but obviously there's more of a colorful mix in the Noodles Polish. Then for Love You A Latte, I had to see this next to Olive Ave's Copper, which came out in last year's fall collection. You can probably tell in the bottle it's a little bit deeper, but this is one of those that's so surprising because on the nail, it ends up looking a lot darker than Love You A Latte. So yeah, definitely not dupes. It's too dark and a little too brown. So I thought a closer shade that I had was Cirque's Arabesque, which is a little bit lighter and more orangey, kind of leaning into that terracotta color, which I I'm just so obsessed with. <laughs> Please, if you have any other recommendations for shades in this color family, let me know. But yeah, these definitely look super similar, especially in the bottle, but on the nail, there is a slight difference between them where Cirque's Arabesque is just a little bit brighter and more of a true orange, while Love You A Latte is a little dustier and that true terracotta color. Next for Give Em Pumpkin to talk about, I wanted to see this next to Hollow Taco's orange drink. Even though it's a completely different formula, this is a linear holographic formula and the nail poly shade is more of like a shimmery metallic with hollow flakies. So to get to a closer base color, I thought maybe Zoya Soleil would be similar because it's again kind of that shimmery, almost metallic looking polish. And I think these are definitely the closer of the two. So you can see on the nail that orange drink is definitely a lot more of a true orange with that stronger linear hollow finish. But Zoya Soleil ended up looking almost a little bit peachy or bronzy and it obviously was missing those hollow flakes. So I thought to add hollow tacos, flaky hollow taco over that, but they were just a little too small and also more dense. So I wouldn't say this recreation was successful. And then for You Are Beautiful, I wanted to quickly show this next to Cirque's Golden Nights, which is also basically a dupe for Mooncat's When the Devil Strikes, just to show you the difference in their base colors, where the nail polys is more of that true gray charcoal with a lot less dense flakies. Next for Serialistly Lucky, I wanted to show this next to Noodles Nail Polishes the North Pole, which I'm pretty sure I shared in my favorite Crellies video. They just kind of had the same vibe to me, even though they are a little bit different, where Noodles is a little bit more of an ivory, creamy colored base, and Serialistly Lucky looks a little bit more on that whiter side. Not to mention that one has micro flakies, while Noodles has micro glitters in red and silver. Sadly, the Noodles isn't around anymore, but but unfortunately, these aren't dupes. Then for Do the Hokey Pokey, I really thought that Olive Ave's Borealis was going to be a dead on dupe for this one. Mine kind of has ugly bottle syndrome because it's been sitting in my drawer for years unused. But again, this one just ended up drying down a little bit darker, even though they look so similar in the bottle. I'm not quite sure how or why that happens. But yeah, unfortunately, these aren't dupes. And also, unfortunately, Borealis stains a little bit. So be careful with that one. Then for So Very Sweet of You, I really thought this was going to be a dupe for OPI's High Barbie from the Barbie collection that came out this past summer. And these, again, look super similar in the bottle, so I thought they were going to be dead on dupes, but there is a slight difference where I would say So Very Sweet of You is a little bit deeper, a little bit dustier, and has a slight berry or purple undertone to it, so it's not as pure of a pink as High Barbie. And lastly, for Squeeze the Day, I immediately thought of this sinful color shade that I had called Eucalypta because it's part of the Essentials collection where I think these are like scented and spa themed or something. <laughs> it's a really beautiful color, but unfortunately it dries down a little bit deeper, almost more sagey maybe, not as bright and white based as Squeeze the Day. So I thought maybe a closer shade would be Nailtopia's Trust the Process, which is this bright minty blue Blue, but as you can see, there is still a slight color difference where Nailtopia is a little bit on like the aqua leaning side. So it almost makes Squeeze the Day look like a baby blue in comparison. But yeah, these are not dupes. So that wraps up my swatches and comparisons for nail polys. So I cannot wait to hear what you think of these super cute polishes because 
like I've said so many times, these are just so adorable. I'm just such a fan of like the cute artisan kind of vibe that these have with their little sculpted caps. Obviously it's a very novelty kind of item, like a collectible or whatever. I can totally understand the majority of people probably not really being interested in these, but I think they are super cute and they kind of just feel like art in a way where I know that the price can definitely be steep compared to other indie brands, but again, it is because of their hand sculpted caps. So just keep that in mind that when you buy from brands like these, you are supporting the artists behind them. And that is something that I will always be behind. So yeah, I'm a fan overall. As always, I will have Nail Poly's website linked down below in the description box if you wanna check them out. And I also have a code for you guys too. You can use the code POLISHEDYOGI for $10 off your order of 45 or more. And yes, to be clear, this is an affiliate code, which means I do make a small commission if you use it, which of course, no pressure to do that. But if you do use it, a big, big thank you for your support. So yeah, make sure to leave any and all thoughts that you have down below so we can chat about it. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.